In today's show, we've got news about Disney celebrating the history of Mickey Mouse and iconic pop artist Keith Haring with some new collaborations. We've got new menus of the Mediterranean, if I could speak today, at Spice Road Tables. And new emos. What are they? Why do we care? All in today's Disney Parks Podcast. Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times and get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. So glad that you were here. Hey, before we get too into it, I want to tell you about our good friends over at Destinations to Travel. Now is absolutely the time to have a travel agent in your hip pocket because we just got done doing like one or two shows for our Patreon group, and they were all about things that were happening at Disney that could change literally like that. So you don't want to be stuck with vacation plans and then Disney changes something and then you have to come out of pocket for more money. The best thing that we could do is get you in touch with our friends at Destination to Travel. Uh, So they are your all around uh, all purpose travel planner and they will uh, let you do as much planning as you want to do and they could just be there to help and they don't cost you a dime but it's better to have them and not need them as opposed to needing them and not having have them and it doesn't care what kind of travel you want to go on just a disney vacation maybe you want to travel uh, around the united states and, and visit some different places they can plan that out too uh some cruises are starting to uh to book if you want to book a cruise you can do that as well let destinations of travel help you so we encourage you to go to disneyparkspodcast.com forward slash travel uh there's a quick little form to fill out and someone from destinations to travel will get in touch with you again we've changed the url guys disneyparkspodcast.com forward slash travel for our friends at destinations to travel yeah. We're going to bring on uh, two agents uh, every month and you'll be able to ask them uh, questions. So uh, I think the 25th, when are we, when are the? Yeah, that sounds about th- right. Next yeah. Monday? Yeah, I think next, next Monday, Monday right. uh, we're going to bring on uh, two new agents. Uh, the previous ones have moved on, but they'll come yeah, on. Heidi and Stacey, right? Uh, Heidi and Christine, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, they're going to come on and they're going to uh, regale you with Disney stories. No. Uh, so, no, if you have travel questions, uh, you know, start writing them down so that uh, when they come on, you'll be able to ask those questions. Yeah. I know a lot of you guys think, but I like to plan my own travel. Yes, I get it. They get it. But there's that's, stuff going on that's yeah. happening fast. And what's so. wrong with an expert opinion? Yeah, there's no reason free not to have expert happen. opinion. <laughs> free expert opinion. Uh, so, how was your weekend, Uncle Tony? Uh, pretty quiet. Nothing exciting. Cooking, cleaning. Nothing exciting. You know, all the all the fun things of a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, <laughs> mine was about the same actually. Um, Sunday was kind of we were just cleaning the house and getting ready to watch our beloved Cleveland Browns um, get screwed out of of beating the defending world champions. Mm. Uh, so you yeah. guys lost, yeah. I, I assume, then, from we, that we did lose. We okay. did lose, but the thing is, is we, we gave them a pretty good fight, but there was this one specific play <coughs> where the rule is just a silly rule. Oh. Um, but um, but there was a, another foul on top of that that didn't get noticed. Like helmet-to-helmet contact was made, and uh, they didn't call it at all, and that's, that's, a, that's a big foul. Mm. Uh, but, hey, mm. you know what? We're going to be better next year. We're already we're already a million times better than we've been in years past. So, yeah. uh, congratulations! Well, made it this far. I'm going to have to yeah. say yes to that. <laughs> yes, yeah. So that was Sunday. Saturday was a different story, though, oh, because yeah. apparently, uh, if you didn't know, Gideon's Bakehouse opened at Disney Springs, and um, we have new we have that in the news stories, right? Or do we? I haven't uh, looked in the news. I don't now. even know anymore. So Disney, uh, Disney let it out and Gideon's let it out that they, uh, I'm not seeing it. So I'm going to assume that no. So they were opening the store. The official grand opening was the 16th, which was last Saturday. So apparently us and about 
four or five hundred thousand other people decided to do the exact same thing from a social distance of course from a social yes from a social distance so we go down to disney springs and we got there too early because the the uh the uh garages weren't open yet so there's a line of traffic waiting to get into the garage and uh, luckily we were up on the hill going into the orange garage is mm-hmm. orange or whatever one in front of splitsville orange. and uh there was a line behind us a very long line i don't even want to know how long the line was coming off the highway uh so we had to wait for 9 a.m for them to open up the uh uh, oh, the garages. So once we got in the garage, we went through the the uh, the security and the uh, the health protocol, which I was nervous because all week I've been kind of sick, not with COVID, just with my yearly, uh, you know, winter cold. Right. So I'm like, God, I'm in a fever and I pop here. I can't, there's nothing I could do. Crap. But I wasn't running too high of a fever. Everything was fine. And um, so we got through, and the line was from the AMC Theater all the way around by Starlight, um, Stargazer's Lounge, all the way across the, the lower bridge, all around by Morimoto Asia, all the way up to where Gideon's is, <laughs> across the street from uh, Jock Lindsay's hangar bar. It was a long-ass line. It started in Adventureland at the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> Went down yeah. Vista Way, down Bunny Creek. <laughs> the good news is, is uh, a good chunk uh, of the line was just for the virtual queue. So once we got into the virtual queue, we got our time, uh, and we also got in line for uh, something that we'd never done before, which was um, a brunch at Art Smith's, which was amazing. It was so. So let me good. ask you: once you got your return time, where was that line? Uh, I think Sid said that it started roughly around Morimoto Asia. Wow. So somewhere, somewhere near Morimoto Asia is that line. Mm. And then, uh, and then, yeah, we saw Beatrice there and, uh, we, the whole time Beatrice's group was waiting to go. We were having breakfast. We started breakfast and they were like, uh, they were moving left to right. They started breakfast and they were on our, our left. Halfway through breakfast, they were right in the center. And then right as we were finishing breakfast and starting our second cocktail, they'd finally moved to the right. And they were still hadn't moved that eye shot yet. So it, was wow. just, it was a long line. So Sid, I think uh, we made the decision that um, we needed to pick up something from Ikea. And I did not want to wait for gideon's and then go to ikea so i went to ikea on my own Mm -hmm. and picked up everything we needed to get there and then went back and waited for about 20 minutes for sid because i think her time was around 2 30 quarter to three something like that Mm. so uh they were running 70 minutes behind which was confirmed on instagram uh, and they were very tight with their protocols or how many people they were and were not allowing in the store uh, in, in the yeah. store. Uh, and they changed it up a little bit. So it wasn't the same flow. It wasn't the same um, process exactly as the first time they had opened, um, which was great. But, you know, um, we didn't buy a ton this time. We didn't buy one of everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we got a few things. Um, but she got in, got out. Everything was great. And, um, we got, um, we actually were able to, uh, we were given another poster, oh, nice. uh, one of the pre- posters that they were giving out. So they gave us a poster, Sid got her poster, and then the uh, the manager gave her an extra one just for the listeners of WDW Park Hoppers. Cool. Sorry, kids. Um, so yeah, so it was cool. I mean, she had a great time, but they were running, we heard 12 hour waits. Wow. Um, yeah, that's what I was hearing, yeah. 11 to 12. Yeah. So it was just crazy. Um, you know, if, if it wasn't for, uh, you know, Patrick and his team, I'm not sure I'd have done it. Mm. Um, but I know, know I I'm, didn't. There was no way I'm I was. Glad. When I heard that they were going to open, I, I knew the entire county uh, was going to descend down on Disney yeah. Springs. It was, it was crazy. The smart but thing the- to do would have been go to the East Market and get your cooking. You would have been out in five minutes probably. 
Mm. <laughs> but the cool thing was, and Beatrice will back me up on this, there was a really cool energy there. Mm-hmm. And I think part of it was just, you know, everybody was excited about Gideon's Bakehouse being open. But I think it was just the fact that, oh, my God, we're in 2021. It's a brand new year. Something fun is opening up. Right. This is new. And I think people are what's what's more extreme than desperate uh, whatever that word is for yeah. that something they just needed something and it was a it was a great day it's a great day for gideon's and now they're open full time so over the course of the next weeks and months the lines will get slower i mean lower um you know and the process will become faster so yeah. it won't be as bad. i'll get one for christmas you come over to my house right now and i'll give you <laughs> half of one <laughs> Hell, I'll give you a whole one. I don't care. I'll go back. <laughs> so, yeah, that was our Saturday. And then we just basically went back home, and both of us were kind of – she's been nursing a cold, and I've had a cold. So <laughs> we just basically crashed, <laughs> came back home, crawled in bed, went out. Yeah. Next thing I know, it was night. <laughs> That's what happens when you wait in the line for 11 hours. <laughs> we didn't Time seems to get the best of you. I will say this, though. I am appreciative of the fact that it was a virtual queue. So you went in and checked in, and you could do anything you wanted. You just disappeared, and then they texted you, and it's time to get back. Um, There were a lot of people who were staying close for some odd reason. Right. But, you know, that's the prerogative. Right. So, so Beatrice, you have a good time to enjoy the cookies since you're listening live. Beatrice is our good buddy. That's she's like the um, she's she's like Visa. She's everywhere you want to be. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about before we get into it? Outside no. of the fact that oh my god, was WandaVision not awesome? Yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. No, nope. you want to hear our two cents? You're gonna have to become a good old Patreon and go listen to the Disney Plus uh, podcast show. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess there's nothing else we could do but get into the news. And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. Disney is celebrating the history of the Mickey Mouse and the iconic pop artist Keith Haring with new product collaborations in celebration of two true originals, uh, Mickey Mouse and Keith Haring. Uh, Disney has collaborated with Keith Haring Studio to feature the artist's iconic work featuring Mickey Mouse on an exciting range of apparel and accessories. I can't read. Uh, In 1980, Herring created original works of art featuring Mickey Mouse in a new style unique to New York City street culture, taking inspiration from both pop art and urban graffiti. His love for Mickey Mouse was rooted in the childhood experiences he developed uh, and influenced by Mr. Walt Disney himself and the incredible skill and mastery of American cartoonists in the 50s and 60s, even aspiring to be a cartoonist himself. So Disney and the Keith Herring studio have now brought these renowned artworks to life through shop product collections including Uniqlo, Max Bone, Stance, Coach, Metacrom, Swatch, as well as Levi's, Diamond Supply Company, Zara, and Corksicle. Finally, that I can get excited about, uh, which will be launching in spring of 2021 at retail locations around and including Disney Springs and Walt Disney World. So I'm hoping the Corksicles will be available over at uh, wine bar George because I could do with the Mickey Mouse corksicle. Yeah, that would probably be good. Those cups are expensive. They're not cheap. Uh, little what I I they started like twenty four, twenty five bucks, right? Uh, you can get corksicles in the teens, oh, okay. and they're worth it, man. I mean, totally okay. worth it. Like I had a I had a uh, you know the the cube ice. I had a cube ice mm. cube. Yeah, you put some bourbon in one, and that ice cube and bourbon stay cold for like an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, and that never. Yeah, that I've heard that they do keep things cold or hot for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like Coffee's the Yeti. The Yeti yes. cups. Yeah. But unlike the Yeti at Disney, these cups work. <laughs> well, we have nobody to blame now. Joe's gone. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <Rudy. laughs> All right. Uh, there are new menu. There's a new menu of Mediterranean small plates uh, at Spice Road Table. It was funny. It came up in my uh, Facebook memory thing today. I was there like uh, yeah. opening week or something. Wow. So what a better way to enjoy uh, the Florida weather 
this is the weather we pay for. Uh, then outdoors, saving Mediterranean small plates and refreshing beverages. Uh, now you can add scenic views of World Showcase Lagoon or the two behemoth metal things sitting in the middle of the lagoon. <laughs> you get a behemoth metal thing. <laughs> that now you get a behemoth blocks thing. your view from seeing the other side of the lagoon. <laughs> oh, who wants to see that? Oh, right? gosh, those things are huge. <laughs> Uh, with yeah. decor inspired by outdoor cafes of Morocco seaside, uh, Spice Road Table is now offering a delicious new menu of small plates and sips for you to enjoy al fresco or in the quaint dining room. Now, I think mm. we had a booth inside uh, the last time we were there. But uh, yeah, I I kind of like this whole... Oh, sm I think I have a feeling at some point this is going to be a big restaurant on the waterfront with uh, mm -hmm. you know something like Mexico so that you can get these great views of Harmonious uh, once mm -hmm. it uh, begins its action. Yeah, That's that'd be saying. great. Yeah. So enjoy the small plates while they last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... Uh, let's see if I get this right. New year, new mo's. New mo's. New mil. New mo's. Uh, yeah, I don't know new how to say it. It's a Japanese thing. I might in the chat room dropped it and I missed it. So I guess uh. new year, new mo's. The latest plush trend to come into Disney parks around the world, Disney stores, and shop Disney. Uh, since originally launching Disney stores in Japan and China, China, uh, Shanghai Disney Resort and Hong Kong Disneyland Resort. Disney Numo's plush characters quickly gained popularity on social media as fans styled and took their plush on adventures to Disney parks. What are Numo's, you ask? The name Numo's is a blend of the Japanese word uh, nu, uh, Nugurumi, uh, meaning plush, and Maderu, uh, uh, Maderu, meaning model uh disney's new moose new mo excuse me oh, God. i should have studied japanese uh plush characters are meant to be an extension of oneself with the flexibility to change one's look to suit their unique personality and taste uh disney new mo's are flexible and can do a wide variety a variety of poses uh their pocket size compactness and portability makes them the perfect stop <laughs> he's voguing and it's hilarious uh, make, uh, their portability makes them the perfect little companions and even models so get ready because the first release is going to be Tuesday January 19th tomorrow as we record this and includes Disney Numo's plushes of Mickey Mouse Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck, Daisy uh, Stitch and Angel along with an assortment of fashionable outfits and accessories for you to mix and match to create your own very unique style Disney Numos will also be available for the first time in North America and Europe beginning on the 19th at shopdisney.com, shopdisney.co.uk, Disney stores, and Walt Disney World Resort. So stay tuned because these new trends, our new, our new friends, excuse me, will be coming to downtown Disney District at Disneyland Resort and Disneyland Paris at a later date. Uh, they have a stitch one, by the way, and it's saw Stitch. that. I just and, read that. Yeah, and Stitch's girlfriend, so you may want to yep. <clears throat> look at those, Sean. Yep. yep, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, hey, there's a new exhibit coming to the American Adventure Pavilion. It's The Soul of Jazz. will debut uh, this February in Epcot. This is the wow. historical transformation of Epcot. We'll take another step forward in early February with The Soul of Jazz and American Adventure, a new exhibit debuting uh, inside the American Prevention, America Adventure Pavilion, featuring Joe Gardner from Disney and Pixar Soul, which is now streaming on Disney Plus services. Uh, you are also invited on a musical tour of America and learn about the inspiring genres of music. Uh, <laughs> You'll be looking forward to the soul of jazz at the American Adventure Pavilion next month. Uh, and as soon as we get more info, obviously we'll bring it right to you here. So, right. so that's good. I I like when they change the things out there uh, in that little museum area of uh, you know because you know you go there, you listen to Voices of Liberty, you know, back in the day, and then you wait for the show, uh, and that was also you know a good way to you know get a little edutainment uh, yeah. while while waiting to do things there. So it's good. 
I did enjoy that as well. Yep. So that's good. Hey, if you'd like to support the show, uh, all you have to do is go to uh, DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash Patreon, uh, and you can sign up to be uh, one of our Patreons. we got a bunch of different levels, uh, and basically those levels will give you a bunch of reward, and it'll help support the show. Uh, so uh, we want to thank all of our current patrons, uh, but we also have show uh, rewards at different levels. So you get the extra and the extra, extra magic hour show. Uh, you also can get the Disney plus podcast, which is a podcast all about the Disney plus streaming service, as well as there's also a level that will get you all three shows plus all the benefits and rewards uh, at those levels. And you get the monthly Disney by the numbers t-shirt directly uh, sent directly to your door. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, accepting the email and pushing the button on it and all like that. It just, it's done automatically. Uh, so go check that out. The best way to do that is go to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash Patreon, P A. T R E O N sign up and uh, become a Patreon today. Sounds good to me. Yep. Uh, we have a, our annual survey is still up and available for uh, your participation. Uh, so you go to Disney parks, podcast.com forward slash survey, or it's pinned to our Facebook page at the top. Either one, it's going to the end of the month. And then at the end of the month, we're going to randomly select one person doing like a little prize package. So take the survey, have a little fun, and then maybe win something. Uh, right. Let's talk about meetups. So we want you to get your piece of paper, get a pen, write these down. Uh, because this is when we're hoping that we can see uh, some of our friends in uh, person. So starting on March 6th, uh, 7 p.m., we are going to Geyser Point. Uh, we're going to have uh, some cocktail, maybe some eats, and view the electrical water pageant. So <clears throat> that is the purpose, to view yep. boats with lights. <laughs> yep. And, and uh, music. we should try to get that little seating area. Yes, outside. There. Not outside, not under the thing, but there's a little yes. seating area that's got, yes. Yeah. yeah, and that's not run by Guys of Point uh, restaurant, <laughs> so we can go grab that, hopefully. Uh, yeah. May 29th, uh, we're hoping to go to AMC Theater uh, at Disney Springs and see a movie. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be a Disney movie, but uh, uh, I think we're leaning towards Back to the Future as our choice, so... Uh, you know, if you have a different opinion on what we should go see, go look at the AMC selections and then tell us like Indiana Jones is there and there's some other things. But I think uh, Back to the Future would be a, a good fun movie to see uh, on a big screen again. I I don't even remember if I saw it on a big screen back in the day. Oh, I did. I totally did. Yeah. 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 Uh, back by popular demand, we are August 7th uh, going to uh, Ravello for breakfast. Uh, in the coming uh, months, we will uh, tell you to sign up uh, right now. <clears throat> I'm just waiting till they open up their reservation window uh, for this date, and then uh, we'll start uh, you know, taking reservations. It probably will have to be 10 to 12 people or less. Uh, I don't know if they'll allow large groups, so uh, if this is something that you do want to do, we will be there uh, August 7th. Uh, it's the breakfast, uh, I'm using my air quotes, buffet. It's not a buffet, but it's a buffet. And uh, it does have uh, Mickey, Minnie, and uh, Goofy as uh, characters that will be in the dining room as well. And finally, right. December 11th, we are doing our uh, hopefully our Christmas crawl, uh, assuming monorails and lounges are operational, <laughs> we yeah. will attempt a Christmas crawl. And the poly should be open by then, so that'll be good. So that'll that'll work out well. All right, let's talk about uh, last week's trivia. Last week's trivia was uh, who was the only Disney princess with a tat? And uh, the correct answer is... Pocahontas. Uh, and I don't even know. I should probably have gone and looked up, but what is Pocahontas? What does Pocahontas have a tattoo of? I guess it would be the property of John Smith. 
<laughs> that should probably be the question. Uh, so Patrick yeah, is the winner. In the woods. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Patrick is the winner, so we'll uh, send that out to you, Patrick. Uh, right. This week's trivia question. Get your Googles ready. Who was the actor that received the first Golden Globe nomination for a voicing of a character in a Disney animated film. So who was the first mm. Golden Globe nomination for voicing a character in a Disney animated film? If you think you know mm. the correct answer, send that to Disney Parks Podcast at gmail.com. Wow. I'd be interested to see what the results are going to be for this one. Yeah, because I, I in my in the back of my head, I, I, I thought that I had the right answer, but apparently I was wrong. Yeah. I had an answer. It was wrong. 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 As I am. But this time I was being serious and I was still wrong. Yeah. Uh, so let's do a quick look ahead of Walt Disney World Resort. Uh, uh, vacationers have more options to choose from uh, than ever when it comes to transportation, including rideshare services uh, that save time and offer much more flexibility to go wherever you want, whenever you want uh, on property. So in light of this shift, when Disney Resort hotel bookings open for stays in 2022... Disney will no longer offer Disney's Magical Express service from airport transportation. Starting with arrivals on January 1 of 2022, Disney will continue to operate the service for new and existing reservations made at Disney Resort hotels for arrivals through 2021. Additionally, complimentary transportation options such as buses, monorails, and the Disney Skyliner will continue to be available within Walt Disney World Resort for Disney Resort Hotel guests, including to and from all four theme parks. Hmm. Uh, Disney uh, is retiring this option. They're introducing some new ways for guests to enjoy their visits while reimagining others. That's a key sentence right there. Correct. Now available, the return of the park hopper option. Yay. Um, Disney kicked off a new year with the exciting milestone of bringing back the park hopper option with some new updates as part of the ongoing focus on health and safety. Uh, with the return of this option, guests can enjoy more Disney magic in their theme parks, including the Taste of Epcot International Festival of the Arts happening uh, now through February 22nd and the Taste of Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival springing to life on March 3rd. Um, Special vacation offer for those who are ready to start planning your next vacation. Disney's just released a new offer. You can get two extra days added to your ticket when you buy a four-night, three-day room and ticket package at select resort hotels for arrivals most nights, January 8th through September 25th, 2021. Also, visit DisneyWorld.com offers to learn about other great offers uh, that Disney recently launched. The best suggestion would be to contact our friends over at destinations to travel by going to disneyparkspodcast.com forward slash travel because a you could talk to a real person b they probably have up to the second information just makes it much easier so coming soon they're going to have uh they've gotten rid of the extra magic hours now they're coming in with early theme park entry so, uh, Disney knows the guests enjoy the extra park time. So, coming later this year, as part of the 50th anniversary celebration, Disney Resort hotel guests and guests of other select hotels will be able to enjoy more fun with 30 whole minutes of early entry to any theme park every day which is not a bad. Uh, as a reminder, the extra magic hours benefit was suspended when Walt Disney World reopened last summer. And as Disney continues to manage attendance with health and safety top of mind, extra magic hours will not return. Uh, the shows, however, are available over on Patreon. Uh, the new <laughs> <laughs> For our non Patreon, like, what? <laughs> um, new early theme park entry benefit helps Disney spread visitation across all four theme parks while providing added flexibility by giving guests extra early park time on each day of their vacation and in the park of their choosing. Please note that guests need valid uh, park admission and a park reservation made via the Disney Park Pass system to enter a theme park. 
I, if I was Disney, I would have, uh, you know, all right, so they had the magic hour. That was a whole hour, obviously, right? 60 minutes, hence the name, <laughs> hour. Uh, so I would have, uh, I guess, taken a different approach. I would have, uh, to spread it a little bit more, I would have said, okay, you could have 30 in the morning or you could have 30 in the evening, you know, and then you're spreading it, you know, because some people, uh, if you take your adult uh, crowd, uh, they would much rather go at night, uh, right. you know, for dinner and something like that. And that would also entice restaurants, you know, to do things uh, to keep people in the parks a little bit longer if they were dining there. Um, right. So I don't know. I would have split it. I would have, you know, uh, I I like that they're doing it every day and you don't have to guess like, you know, Magic Kingdom was Tuesday, Thursdays of the fourth Friday of the fifth month. You know, it's not an algorithm I have to memorize. Uh, it's just every day I get an extra 30 minutes. But I, I would have opted for nighttime as well, especially during yeah. the summer when it's cooler. And and if I'm understanding it correctly, you have to have a reservation and at the park the at yeah. that park. Yes. And that's the park you have 30 minutes to. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and that's only for resort guests. So resort guests right. get a benefit thirty minute jump on everybody else. Right. Uh, yeah. Our DVC friends will have to tell me. Uh, I believe it's true, but I think they're also getting this perk as well. And I've not, I've not checked yet, but I, I'm a, I'm going to take a, a large leap in assumption and uh, assume that they were also being included in that. Yeah. All right, uh, Italy, Italy, uh, in Epcot is uh, getting a new gelato stand, and uh, we have some kind of targeted opening date. So this is a new snack spot uh, that's springing up in uh, Epcot's uh, Italian pavilion. Um, And as a bonus, uh, just have a little something to add to your Disney Eat List. Uh, this new gelato stand will be located just west of the uh, Italian Pavilion and mirrors the building next to it uh, in its terracotta tiled roof. The new stand also utilizes a partial stone exterior finish and, as you might expect uh, from looking at it, uh, I was told that it will also be a lot larger than its predecessor over to the east. So hey, listen, more, more gelato is bueno. Nice, <laughs> more bueno. Uh, the expanded space will allow the new stand to carry twice as much gelato flavors than it currently carried at the the Dotti. Uh and for the first time in forever, <laughs> uh, they have an estimated per, uh, projected completion window for the new stand, and uh, the targeted time frame to for the new location to be up and running is the end of February. So, uh, you have to ask yourself why did why didn't they just make that one bigger? You know why why build a whole whole new one unless the whole layout and design was just you know they're like you know it would take us too much to you know construction to do that we'll just build a new one it'll be easier. I don't know. Now is this taking over a spot? No, there was nothing a- here. Yeah, there was just nothing there. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it was you know, like you know like the door. To get into like the wine area, it's just yeah. a little bit you know west of that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, trying to help you guys with your coast to coast premier passport. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to share how you can keep your Walt Disney World access if you have the coast to coast. Um, <laughs> shocking is not a strong enough word for for most people. Uh, what with the Shocking news that Disneyland is just continuing the annual pass program as we know it. There is one group of Disneyland annual pass holders who will need to take action to save a portion of their pass, which is the Premier Pass holders. The Premier Pass used to offer coast to coast access to both Disneyland, excuse me, and Walt Disney World theme parks. But with the sunsetting of the Disneyland annual pass program, that left Premier Pass holders in an odd spot. Now, Disney has come up with the exact actions a Premier Pass holder will need to take to continue their Walt Disney World exit. Buckle up tight, kids. Here it comes. 
premier pass holders will be eligible to enjoy Walt Disney World theme park access and VI pass holder perks through March 31st of 2021. Uh, and their passes will be canceled thereafter. So, uh, please note, advanced Disney Park Pass reservations required to uh, for park entry. Premier Pass orders will also be able to renew into Walt Disney World Resort annual passes through April 30th of 2021. For questions regarding existing Walt Disney World reservations, please contact VIP Pass Holder Support at 407-939-7272. So the interesting question I guess I have now is, are they giving them a prorated refund on their Disneyland that they've not been able to use? Uh, you know, I, 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 I can't go anywhere with half of this. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. If you are a premier uh, pass holder, uh, let us know, uh, comments or email us. Uh, cause I'd be interested how they're handling that with you all, um, and, and see how, you know, that's going to come around. Mm. All right. Uh, so a Disney executive decided to blow up the internet <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> yeah, I <he> did. <laughs> he said, Oh, hold this beer while I blow up, uh, the internet. <laughs> uh, oh, getting you guys excited about Gideon's? Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah, I I could top Gideon's. <laughs> so if you were waiting for any news or information about the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruise Hotel here at Walt Disney World, well, uh, Jeff Val uh, gave us all a sneak peek. Actually standing in a room. Now, my question was, oh, those are great pictures, Jeff, but is that a prototype room or is that, you know, it's like, is that like a Team Disney? You set up a prototype room? <laughs> you know, kind of like they, they do with the DVC. They set up the prototype yeah. rooms at Saratoga. So that was my question. Is this just a prototype room or is it an actual room? Because if it's an actual room, it looked very small. Now, my comment to everybody was you're in space. You're on a spaceship. It's not the Grand Floridian. You're on a spaceship. So the right. rooms would be small. That's my thinking. But uh, it just made me think a little bit of, like, where was this picture actually taken? Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, he showed images of the guest cabin on his Instagram account and gave us a real-time look at both the bunk beds and the virtual window uh, through which guests will look into space. <laughs> and if you drive past this building, you will notice there... <laughs> if... If you drove past this building, you would go, oh, they're building a prison there. Because that's what, <laughs> that's what it looks like. It's a concrete building with very small sliver windows. Uh, and you would go, oh, they're building a prison there. Because that's what it looks like from the outside right now. You know, it doesn't yeah. look oh, like a store cruiser. What? Yeah, they're building, building a laundry facility. Yeah, that's or what a laundry facility. Yeah, some, oh, they're doing the dirty laundry from uh, Galaxy's Edge yeah. over there. Anyway. <laughs> If you want to see these pictures, I posted them up on uh, our uh, Facebook page, uh, Disney Parks Podcast. Uh, so go to facebook.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast if you want to see these pictures. And co please comment because I, I have I have thoughts about this. Uh, and, and so I, the bed bed looks good. The bunk beds. I don't think you're going to fit a very tall person in them. What? Yeah, they're great for kids. Great for kids. Horrible yes. for adults. Yeah. Like if you were to split that with an adult, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Maybe me. Yeah. I'm a fairly short you person. Have to be a little short. I'm sorry, you have to be a little short to be a stormtrooper to fit into those rooms. <laughs> These are for short stormtroopers only. Uh, yeah, these yeah. elite Skywalker sized stormtroopers <laughs> getting a bump. Uh, I'm about to start off a headline for a news story with a word that you don't often hear from a Disney entity. Ready? Ready. Here we go, kids. Free Alani night with a DVC purchase uh, or DVC reservation, excuse me. Uh, for a limited time, Disney Vacation Club members using points to book a stay at Outlawney and Disney Vacation Club villas uh, are eligible. Sorry, that's my old travel agent 
um, thing. It's Alani, a Disney resort and spa. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so the Alani Disney Vacation Club villas are eligible to receive a complimentary night. Through the end of February, members booking a four-night stay at Alani can receive a fifth night at no additional cost. The offer is valid for most check-in dates through February 28th, 2021. A little quick, isn't it? Like you have to book this now and go. Now, get your COVID test and go. (laughs) Yeah, the offer is valid for most check-in dates through February twenty eighth, twenty twenty one. Reservations must be made by February twenty sixth of twenty twenty one. Members will receive one free night for every four consecutive nights booked, with a maximum of two free nights. Nice. The complimentary nights must be taken on the last night of each eligible stay. Those with existing reservations may cancel and rebook under this offer. Accommodations are subject to availability. Points at Disney's Riviera Resort, which, wait, sorry. That's a yeah, continuation yeah, yeah. of the story. I, I would say this. Uh, don't cancel your Alani vacation until you can get this new one booked. Because... They're not at full capacity, like the, so there's limited, right? So you want to make sure you can get this deal before you cancel your existing reservation. Otherwise, you will not be going to Alani. You'll be just sleeping in your car. So, mm-hmm. 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 all right. This next story I thought was very interesting. This is a list. <laughs> <laughs> They're wrong. They're so wrong. This is a list. Of the top 10 Disney restaurants, according to people on Yelp. Okay, now hang on a second. Let me interrupt for one second. Boys and girls listening and watching, or just listening right now, think of your top 10 list of Disney restaurants. The top echelon. The best of the best at Disney. And see how your list compares to these fine people from Yelp. Okay, I'm going to start at the bottom of this list because the interesting part is the top three. (laughs) Yeah, bottom is, yeah. (laughs) Number 10, the Jungle Cruise Skipper Cantina. Some part of me kind of agrees it's not my favorite place to eat in the Magic Kingdom. Okay, just saying. Like I've said before, I eat off the kids' menu when I go there. And it's usually chicken nuggets. Number nine, which is not even a restaurant, but a quick service snack place, Gaston's Tavern. I mean, yes, there's a couple chairs and tables inside. It's not a restaurant. It it snacks. It snacks, kids. (laughs) Number eight, Cinderella's Royal Table. That I accept. Yeah, I'll give you that one. Yeah, I accept that. That's a restaurant. It has characters. The food is supposedly pretty good up there. Uh, number seven, beer gaton. The beer I give that one. Yeah, that's not bad. Heart. Yeah, I agree. It's a good, especially during the festivals where you can't get a reservation anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I number do. number six, Tiffins. Now I agree with that. That's a it's a pretty good place. It's a, it's a signature restaurant in a park, so I agree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number five, Narcosis. <laughs> Really needs mm. to be a little bit higher on this. <laughs> if, if this is number five, well, the top better be awesome, right? Well, hold on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God. Dear God in heaven, I can't believe you're about to say these words. Number four. There are, number that four. Means, that means there are three other restaurants better than this one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is Victoria now... <laughs> Restaurant is number four. It's a triple five diamond restaurant. How could it be number four? What, what the actual Fred Murray is going on with those idiots? I mean, those fine people over at Yelp. What? Who? What's number four. What's what is the next restaurant that's better than Victorian Alberts? I, I when I was looking at this, I'm going to go. Oh, they were going to pick McDonald's. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. That could, that's coming up. <laughs> Number three is Jinko. Now, I would probably say Victorian Alberts is a little bit better than Jinko's. Oh. It's Jinko, Tony. There's Jinko. no end. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, 
This one. Come on, kids. You ready? Okay, this is one that that this this I can't get over this one. Go ahead. <laughs> Number two, two, two. two. Sci fi dining theater. <laughs> it's number two. <laughs> it outbeat <laughs> Victorian Victor- Albert and Narcosis <laughs> and Tiffins <laughs> and Tiffins. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You get to sit in a car that's not really built for more than two people. And if you're a fat guy, you ain't sitting in that car. That's you ain't right. sitting in the and you yeah. get to eat, and your food is right up against you. You can't spread out. You can't enjoy yourself. And you get to watch reruns of some of the worst, worst commercials <laughs> that are on a loop. That yeah. loop. Uh, yeah, they, they loop while you're dining. So you see the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And the food, I have to say, is hit or miss. I've had good stuff, and I've had, uh, I could I could leave that. So and they've changed the menu. They change the menu there quite often. So you know you keep after going back to try new things. Um, all right, and it, all right. Number one, number one is be our guest. Uh, yeah, all right, number one. If you're talking about theming, yes, number one for theming, hands down. Beautiful place. Uh, you know. Uh, lunch is, I think, better than dinner. Uh, I think dinner is way overpriced and a very small portion. I think you get a better deal at lunchtime. That's just me. But number one? The only way that this list makes any sense <laughs> is if it's the top 10 themed Disney World resorts. Yeah. That's the only way this makes sense. Right. Because what's missing from this list, boys and girls? Oh, let's start with, oh, I don't know. <laughs> California Grill? Yachtsman Steakhouse. <laughs> uh, any of the fine dining restaurants yeah. at Disney Springs? Citrico's. <laughs> Citrico's? Uh, <laughs> Artist Point. <laughs> uh, I mean, even I mean, Trattatore Al Forno should make, should make this list in, in that case. Even- with the, even with the changes, it, 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 the, the 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 artist point boathouse is still there. boathouse Boat, Wolfgang Puck yeah Morimoto Asia yeah yeah maybe this, we this should is, put together our top ten lists <clears throat> maybe our you guys listening should put together your top ten yeah lists and yeah discourse uh, podcast at gmail dot com yeah. So I'd I'd be interested on uh, everybody make a comment on this of your all right t- top tens a lot pick your top five let's just start there let's say top five if you want to do ten fine I'm 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 fine with that but at least top five I'd be I'd be interested I don't I don't think this let list me, is let me let me make a, let me make a prediction let me oh. make a prediction what Tony's number one is going to be Ravello of course. <laughs> Yeah. It sure beats be our guest. <laughs> yeah. McDonald's beats be our guest. <laughs> Lickety Not split. Fight me on it. I'm Lickety split beats be our guest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so crazy. Uh all right, moving on. Uh so Disneyland cancels the annual pass holder program. Wah, wah, wah. This this one hurts. This one hurts a lot of our close friends too. So yeah. uh, Disney made the announcement they were completely canceling Disneyland's annual pass holder program uh, due to the resort's continued closure and uncertainty about reopening conditions once the theme parks are allowed to reopen later this year. We don't know what we don't know. Basically, and Disney's like, you know what? <sighs> Here's your money back. Uh, though new membership options will be available in the future, Disney has not elaborated on what these could be or when to expect any type of reaction because they have no idea when the parks are going to be able to open. Right. Annual pass holders who paid for the year in full or who had an unused balance on a monthly plan can expect a partial refund. Partial refund? Huh? And any annual pass holders who had act- active passes as of March 14th, 2020, will still be able to receive discounts on merchandise, food, and beverages at open locations at Disney, uh, Downtown Disney District, and Buena Vista Street. In addition, the premium passport, which we discussed earlier, which offers year-round access to both Walt Disney World and Disneyland, will be canceled. 
after March 31st of 2021. Guests who already have the Premier Passport will receive a refund for the Disneyland portion of uh, in the future. Because there are so many different types of annual passes, Disney has put together a handy guide to show how refunds will be handled between different pass types. Uh, you can check that out over at Disneyland.com, I'm assuming. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, though it's sad to see Disneyland's annual pass over to a program go, hopefully whatever new membership option will be uh, will help Disney's biggest fans continue to enjoy the parks they love uh, with so much year round fun and excitement as long as as soon, excuse me, as it is safe to do so. So, so have we started the statement. It's, it's not as when it's safe to do so. It's when your governor will allow you to do so. Yeah. Because it is yeah. safe. It's just that your governor yeah. has said no. Right. Have we started the countdown clock on Walt Disney World's yet? No, but we should do a uh, contest. We had a contest for when did well, we did have a contest for in both, and it it they did announce the day, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which was the we anniversary date, and then it tanked. Yeah. So we should yeah. start that contest again and have people, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, maybe, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll think of something that we uh, good that we can give away, like uh, I don't know, something from Disneyland. Oh my god, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, uh okay. Uh, we have some merch. Over at uh, T Public, uh, we have some you know phones and uh, cups and mugs and things based off of our T-shirt club, and you go get them at DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash T E E Public. So go check this out. Uh, mm. Also, over at Disney by the Numbers, this is the 50th anniversary of the Magic Kingdom, so we are doing hopefully 12 shirts that are going to knock your socks off for the 50th anniversary. Now, this month's shirt, which I'm going to show you. They, oh, they, oh, no. How about that one? There you go. So this is January's shirt, and you can get this at DisneyByTheNumbers.com forward slash shop. I would also sign up for the mailing list uh, because what happens is the shirt comes out, Shirt design comes out at the beginning of the month. We print to order, and then the shirt will be shipped at the end of the month. So we don't stock these. We print to order. That means that you have to order it when it's available. Otherwise, Mm -hmm. it goes Uh, Mm bye-bye. This is available, I believe, until uh, Friday, and then poof. It's gone. So if you want this shirt, it comes in a unisex up to 5X, and it comes in a ladies up to 3X. So mm-hmm. you can get that over at DisneyByTheNumbers.com forward slash shop. Hmm. It's awesome. All right, hey kids. hey, kids. How about a little headline news? And now, the headline news. Sadly, another fine Imagineer is retiring. Uh, Kevin Rafferty is retiring after 42 years with the company. Now, I think, like with Joe, I don't think he planned on retiring quite yet. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think they're saying, hey, you know, we'll give you a retirement package early if you want to leave. So uh, with Kevin, unfortunately, goes a lot of great information and history and things like that. And I I think that's the part that makes me the most upset is that these guys have been around for 42 years, have been there, done that, seen that, you know, and when they get back to building things, they're not going to have this cardinal knowledge uh, in house anymore. You know, my feeling is they're going to be hiring this guy back as a consultant. Guess what? He's going to be charging you a lot more than a salary. It's going to cost you one way or the other. Yeah. All magic comes with a price. That's right. That's right. Uh, DVC, 30th anniversary is this year, and merchandise is available on Shop Disney, obviously because they know that not everybody can get to a park or to their favorite DVC or their home resort, even for that matter, to get all these 
fun merch. So they are putting it up on Shop Disney. So if you are a DVC member and you're looking for some 30th anniversary merch, it's on Shop Disney. Uh, Disney Springs lost another store. This is the Keel store. is officially leaving uh, and closed on January 16th. So yep. Yep. we bid you a find. We, we, we barely knew you. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I wonder what Disney IP is going to go in that store next. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm sure they'll think of something. Uh, over at the M&M store, over at the West End, they have the sign up, which is a red M&M. So that's good. That means they're getting, mm-hmm. and they have the yellow facade all done. So nice. it's getting uh, pretty damn close there. Uh, mm-hmm. For pass holders, you have some new pass holder merch. Uh, you have mini ears, you have a hat, you have pin, all kind of stuff uh, to celebrate pass holders. Uh, those are all in the parks, and you can go get all that. Uh, also on the West End, speaking of the M&M store, City Works Eatery and Poorhouse uh, unveils a 